And after an embarrassing number of tries to get the intro right, we are back with Soul Blazer. I'm Alan T. Trith, and we are going to Greenwood. As you see, the first shortcut leads us to Greenwood. A abandoned green field. There is actually nothing here. So, straight on to adventure. Sounds like extra sure. Yeah, nothing here. Okay. And Greenwood is, well, more appropriately, kind of a swamp. So, right off the bat, we've got Mud Men. Kind of remind me of the Puddings from Final Fantasy. Fortunately, we don't need magic to kill them. Just slash them into bits. Ooh, big jump. Okay. And right off the bat, we are releasing a bird. But, you'll notice that the tree spread a little bit too. You can actually talk to the tree as well. Okay, dragons are just temporary enemies. You don't really have to worry about them. Okay, right after that we got plants. Uh, you get too close and they basically shoot an ivy out at you. They're kind of tough because they don't really have any kind of predictable movement. On the other hand, this is a good opportunity to use a magic. As I've mentioned before, if you kill all enemies and make the base blow up like that, it stays that way, even if you go to another area. So, might as well take the opportunity to kill them off. And you'll run into this occasion where just a bunch of them are in the same area, or sometimes a base that just dumps out its enemies. And yeah, it's easier to just go ahead and kill them off. Even if you can't reach the base, might as well blow them all up and uh, make it easier for yourself in the long run. Big walking bush people. Excuse me. Old rickety chair. Okay. Oh, leveled up. Good, because my health is going down. Okay. If you do fight these guys, I suggest you do it with the uh, so that the sword stopping point hits them directly. Well, you see how I do. I, I try to hit the enemy with. The stopping point of the sword because if the uh, these water dragons jump back in the water they completely regenerate all their health which is really annoying okay there are three dungeons in this uh, particular area three temples I think they mentioned it later I don't exactly remember what the names are but uh, Plenty of um, more monsters to take on. As you can see, these guys are pretty predictable. Kind of horrified faces. They kind of look like goopy creepers. Okay, there we go. We also have to be aware that some uh, we'll start running into some more metal enemies. It's not just being aware, you gotta remember where they are, so sooner or later you're gonna want to come back. I mean, if you're completionist like me. There's a, a set of Master's Emblems. They're hidden all over the place, and if you can find all of them, magic costs nothing. So, as you can imagine, that's rather nice. Okay. As soon as we get this guy down. See, this guy's unpredictable and he pops out one at a time. Oh, okay. And a squirrel. Ooh, small voice is coming from the hole. Okay, a hungry squirrel who has a powerful sword. Don't get your hopes up, the metal sword's not to level to area 5. But, a stronger sword will at least be better, so... Now we need to find the stairway that goes down. And keep our eyes open for something a squirrel might find tasty. Don't look too... You don't have to keep that close to the map. I better make sure my, my uh, healing herb is equipped. Okay. Yeah, that's what you, No, not the, not the strange bottle. Okay. But uh, yeah, you know it's going to be in a chest, so I'm going <laughs> to... Items in this game are either from chests or from monsters you or people you release. 
in a way, it does kind of remind, make me think of Mystic Quest, where, uh, in lieu of having areas with, like, random encounters, you had spots in the map where literally it was just fight eight, fight so many monsters. Well, at least this isn't turn-based, huh? Speaking of Final Fantasy, I kind of want to play through Final Fantasy VI again. It's been a long time. I tried playing through the Steam release with like the slightly updated graphics. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I wasn't a fan. I kind of wish they had done what uh, Final Fantasy IV did, but uh, well, they might. They might. I mean, Final Fantasy VII. Is getting re-released. Well, getting remade. And I want to say I called that, by the way. But just, I was saying for years now, just all it was going to take was Squaresoft to screw up, to have a bad year or a mediocre year. And then Final Fantasy 13 came out. <laughs> oh, I hated that. I hated that game so much. <laughs> You know, speaking of Mystic Quest, Final Fantasy XIII really is a modern-day Mystic Quest. Everything's in Australia. Just fight everything you run across, and get to the end, and you can beat the boss, no problem. They tried to add in a lot of the leveling, and, uh, the, uh, the illusion of uh, being able to customize your team, but it wasn't there. Uh, spike traps. Oh, and uh, some experience. Fortunately, everything pauses whenever you're talking, otherwise I'd be in trouble. No true stories. Actually, I picked up the uh, Final Fantasy 13 Edition Xbox. Not so much because of the game, though I had wanted to play it at the time. And we have Medical Herb. But not because I wanted to play the game so much as I my, next, my first Xbox had finally died. And that was the unit, I think, that came with an uh, extra controller. I can't remember if it came with an extra controller or if it was a situation where it was like, well, it costs as much as just the unit by itself, so I might as well pick up the unit plus game. You know, though, I... I I've complained. I complained about Final Fantasy XIII. I think I know a way to fix it, to have fixed it at least a little bit. The game starts with you, um... Yeah, sorry I'm going on this huge time. <laughs> Nothing to do with this area, but there's really not much to say about this area, I mean. It's kind of a problem with this game in total. It's not, it's not that it's not fun, but, um... Oh, we got, uh... Delicious seeds. Good, we can get that extra sword now. But uh, a lot of it's just fighting the same monsters, and because they're you see where they spawn from, it's kind of boring. In a sense, I suppose. Me, I just like fix. I like building things. I like fixing things. Again, we have some of them that are they're blinking just at the right frequency where you can't see them, but I can. Well, at least I could whenever I was playing this. Okay. Yep, yeah, good keep our distance and just blast them with fire from here. Okay. In fact, I think there's another magic spell not too far from here. Well, hopefully we'll see it soon. Okay, released a crocodile who had an island apparently. What was I saying on thirteen? Oh right, um Well the game starts like right off with you and the on the train trying to re uh, rescue, was it Sarah, Lightning Sister? But in a way, that was kind of the problem. I've seen stories where they, they start with that kind of jump in, but we're in something like Final Fantasy, uh, no, that doesn't really count. But um, I've seen it done, I'm just saying, I've seen it done in other things before where uh, they start with the action scene, then back up and show the previous scene. Instead of using a uh, flashbacks, they just kind of flash forward right at the beginning. Yeah, these guys can be tricky. What's worse is, because they look so similar, that first time you're playing this area, it is so easy to walk by these guys and not even know they're there. 
But if you look, there's a very slight color difference. Anyway, back to Final Fantasy XIII. What I was going to say was, they start off with like the train scene, and then they later flash back to the scenes in the Sarah and Lightning's home village. They really should have just started uh, like there, have no flashback at all, and just start in the village. So at least you get to know the characters right off the bat. I don't know. I just that's how I would have done it. There's other parts of the game it just it's hard to avoid the the, the corridor, of course. The the fact that the game is basically just running down the very pretty corridors. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, I don't know. That's enough about Final Fantasy XIII. I, I don't, I didn't like it. I thought it, was, I thought it would have been better after Final Fantasy XII, which I actually liked. Even though I, I do agree with the consensus that Vaughn, as the main character, makes no sense. And I've heard he's basically just added as a, um, what did they say? He was basically added as a... Sort of every man, like a young character for the kids to get behind him. I've never really got that kind of mentality. I've been watching Doctor Who for ages, and the fact that the, the Doctor is nothing like you know, my age group or anything like that makes. I thought he was awesome. Really did like that game, though. It was a nice twist, nice turn from the uh, traditional turn based combat. And the, Second. Yeah, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Waiting for a pizza shop. <laughs> okay, uh See, that's the problem with the wandering off subject is I can't remember where I was starting from. Okay. Well, we're almost finished with this temple at least. One more set of mud men. And we have the delicious seeds. I can't forget that. We need to... Uh... And gems. Then we got the seeds so we can get the sword. I don't remember what sword this one was. Though I do remember the first time playing this. Every time I got a new sword. Back to the first area. Waste so much time on that. Only to find out it didn't work. Okay. I hear 12's gonna get a re release. Some sort of like HD upgrade. I look forward to that. If I had to levy any complaint about 12, it would be the. Um, it seemed like at the very beginning they might have been going for a romance thing between um, Vaughn and Ash. Maybe after he was added in. But someone vetoed it, or just <laughs> maybe they figured it just wasn't gonna work. Like the scene when you first see her, she she sees like the prince's face in his uh, in his face, and it seems to sort of imply, yeah, it's gonna be uh, romance in some level there. Nope, Vaughn's basically just sort of a tagger along. And again, maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Like I said, it's been a while since I played. Sadly, I've got a PlayStation 2 all hooked up and ready to go. I just haven't done anything with it. Okay. Now we're able to go into the next dungeon. Okay. I'm going to guess this one's called Fire. Oh, and there's our metal enemy. Okay, Lizard Men. Fair enough. Oh, I hope I have health. Yeah, I got, I got another blur. I'm good. I think I'm torn on Final Fantasy VI, though. Is that I want to play Final Fantasy VI again. But I want all the extra stuff from the uh, special versions. With the graphics so much. Oh, point out... 
I did mention that you will need a spectral sword later in the game. And yet, those specters... And that was clearly some kind of ghost. Or smoke monster or something. I would call it spectral. They would kill it with a normal sword. Whatever. But, uh, I remember, like, the Final Fantasy 1 re-release had the special dungeons. With bosses from some of the earlier Final Fantasy games. And I remember as they went, the special dungeons really had some cool stuff in them. Uh, Final Fantasy 4's, uh, re-release. I don't think, I'm not sure if it was on the 3D version, but I know it was on the, um, like, the PSP special version. Had the extra dungeons with the, uh, everyone in your team. You could, like, anyone you could pick up in the game. Had a special dungeon that lets you switch, swap out for some other characters who you might not have chosen. And, uh, go through dungeons that were designed specifically after those characters. And it was neat. It was like, uh, kind of remind me of Mass Effect with the, uh, personal, the personal missions. Okay. This area is really annoying, as you can tell. Bunch of monsters around. Can't kill those metal ones. Couldn't think of it. I think the next sword you pick up is the one that paralyzes enemies that you can't kill, which makes this area even more annoying. Okay, got a squirrel. Because if a skeleton scorpion, metal scorpion, is coming towards you, about all you can do is hit him. Which will just paralyze them, which means you either got to go around them or go through them anyway. Okay, we got these blinking blink lizards. They're kind of unpredictable, but uh, not too hard. Okay, got another crocodile. Okay. See, I couldn't see this getting a re-release. Mostly because I just don't understand how it would do the combat. There's no way to change it without changing the game, you know? Without making it a completely different kind of game. Like, in Illusion of Gaia, instead of resorting to the monsters popping out of there, they're just there. And when you kill all, like, all of the monsters that, or I think it's all the monsters in a certain area, then you get a bonus for it. There's no world rejuvenation in that one, but, uh... Well, except in the broad story sense, but still, it was something, you know? Okay, heading back up. I'm going to go back to the town real quick, and... Oh, yeah, because there's a... Just to pick stuff up, pick up a sword, heal up. And chat with everyone who happens to be around. We're getting really close to, like, the halfway point, so... Okay. You can follow him around. He'll point you at some things. Various. So he's like, oh, I smell these people over here. I smell a stunt down there. And then he leads you to the toilet. And he's like, hmm, that smells funny. Why don't you smell it? Dog. Okay. Squirrel. Oh, is this the squirrel with the seeds? Might be. Uh, no. He's mentioning Turbo the dog, though, who's one of the people we need to look for. Presumably has one of the stones that leads to the Dark World. However, I believe he's already dead. I'm not sure who's the... Oh, yeah, I remember the one. Okay. Yeah, here we go. This is the one with the seeds. Well, no reason to keep him. Seeing that and thinking about Final Fantasy VI, it reminded me of the, uh, I'm sure I'm going to get this wrong after so long, but I remember there's the, what, the Ragnarok? Magis Knights? All I remember is that you could, uh, you had the Magis Knight, and you had the option of trading it for, uh, turning it into a sword or a shield. 
Maybe not. I don't remember. I think you could turn it into a sword is what it was. But uh, if you did, you lost the Magicite. And it was like the only one that taught Ultima. There was a way around it. If you took the cursed shield and fought so many fights, it turned it broke the curse. It had like a very sl uh, a very slow. Uh, I can't think of the word. It's been so long since I played. But it would teach you Ultima at the same rate, so you could use the Magicite to get the sword. Of course, back in the day, I remember. Um, I forgot. I don't know what they call it now. Game. It was, it was basically game breaking, where you kind of jostle the cartridge and it kind of screws up the game. If you could get out and save, uh, if, it, I remember, if it was in a fight, the idea was to do it in a fight and you get out, and set, try to save your game, and you would have all sorts of weird stuff in your inventory. Sixty-six Ragnarok swords and just all sorts of bizarre stuff. Birds. It's hard to catch that bird. He kind of he flies back and forth. So, okay. <laughs> I do have some nerve. Okay, we have the graveyard here. We he hear somebody snoring, but he can't tell which way it's coming from. Okay, let's check in the mole areas. Oh. Oh yeah, every area has one of these guys. Basically someone who joins you and is going to help you out with something. This one is a... Oh, he functions like a torch. Again, centered around that little glowing light that circles around you. Okay, well, if you find Mono, we'll do that. Ah, someone's snoring, and the squirrel can't figure out who it is. Once again, we go to the dream rods. Let's see what trees dream about. Ah, this one's critical. You, if you talk to the bird, you go out of the dream. But you want to hit that first. Stump dreams he's a bird, so he can fly wherever he wants. I can understand that. Okay. Even though the area was blocked off in the dream, in the real world here, we should be able to go up there. Once we figure out where we open up the spot. Here we go. And now uh, we can get this. The ice armor. Which is the real reason I came back, because this next part of the dungeon, we kind of need it. Everybody yet? Oh, yeah, I'll well save. In fact, yeah, it's about time. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up next time. See you then.